everyone, it's Teresa here from South East London. I hope you're all well and fit. And if you're in the UK, enjoying this summer or the start of summer, it is really lovely out today. Uh, fingers crossed that it might last longer than the weekend, <laughs> but I doubt it. This video is a continuation of the weaving course that I'm involved in, that I'm bringing you along with, so to speak. Um, the Facebook members will know the story of this piece of furniture that you're looking at. It's a bed head. Now, I saw this as I was coming back from shopping not so long ago. It was left at somebody's... Um, house well block of flats actually for the refuse collectors and when I saw that broken bed and just that piece you're looking at now and um, the size of the glasses and the stapler will give you a rough idea of how big it is I immediately saw loom so I put down my shopping bags rushed over picked this up popped it over my shoulder and walked back home with it with my two shopping bags um, and I started making it into a loom. So I had to move some pieces. Luckily, it was all fixed together with screws that were easy to take out. And the dowel rods that you can see there, I took those out and I made a loom. And this is what I'm using in this project. Um, it's fairly big, so at times I will have to resort to filming on my um, my phone. It's been warped up with two types of string. The white string, that's a th quite a thick string, and the finer string. Now we've used both of these before in the previous project. Here we have the nails across the top. We have two rows of nails. Now I started on the bottom row and I've warped this just as you would the cardboard looms for the wall hanging that we did in the last project. So I've started at the bottom or the top, doesn't matter, and I've taken it up and around the nail, right the way to the bottom, round the corresponding nail, and then up again and just repeated that action. When I finished that, right the way across, I secured it and then I started on the top row. And instead of taking it round one nail, I've now taken it through the same method up and down and round but I've gone up and down and round two nails then down again and at the bottom round two and then back and round two nails again and this gives you this really nice effect I'm not sure if I've made the right choice in using these colours I needed a really strong twine because this is going to be a big work um, it's going to take a lot of pulling a lot of tugging to get a nice tight tension here so that's as far as I am now you can see the holes here um, from its past life as a bed if I move it over here you'll be able to see where I've had to mend broken bits here and put wood filler in there and I've put a hinge here to secure this angle and there's all bits of bed remnants of the bed I think I call it um, and it all the way down where dowling went in so anyway I'm going to carry on now and I'm going to choose the yarn and I'll get back to the other camera because my hand isn't steady enough to use this I've rescued a box from the recycling and it literally was rubbish and I've made a long piece of card, the width of the loam and three inches wide. This is going to be threaded in, woven in all the way across there. I'm going to start here. So I'm going to go under, over, under, over, under, over, under. Oh, thank goodness for that. Now I'm going to push that right down as far as it go. We have a nice straight line there. Oh, fairly straight anyway. It seems a bit dodgy there, a bit wonky there. But not to worry. 
this is being done for the fringe fringe at the bottom so we're not going to start the weaving here we're going to start it here and that will give us a nice length fringe okay so first of all we're going to put in a row of weaving and I think we'll probably do about four rows of weaving just as we did before before we start the weaving and making the fringe I'll just show you the inspiration it's a beautiful seascape uh, by um, a photographer artist called Charmaine and I found this on royalty free photos pexiles.com and it's wonderful for design inspiration so do have a look in there if you are stuck for what to use in your own work um, I'm going to use the colours that you're looking at at the moment the pinks and the blues and the reds it's just so beautiful um, and so these colours will form the basis of the design you've probably noticed that this is looking different I actually had to take it out part way out to turn it over because after I did it I looked at it and all I could say was this the all the busyness of the chips and the piece of fish and all the writing and I thought oh no I can't work with that because this will impact on what I'm doing here so I need to have this card plain so I had to turn it over but anyway it didn't take long and I've done it now thank goodness so, so I'm going to use my 12 inch uh, ruler here for a shuttle it's got a nice uh, hole in the end and I'm going to thread the th the wool or the yarn through that hole and see if I can actually use this as a shuttle if not I will resort to using my fingers so under over and just like before I'm guided by the warp thread that I'm approaching so if the warp thread that I'm approaching is over like it is here then I will go under so that is over and under oh my goodness see I've got it all confused already so that is uh, over under over under over under well i cannot tell but uh, in the newspaper you will see ads from the Christians, and you will see ladies in the christian sun announcing that they are knitting sweaters on the machine right i've now gone away uh, along there four times so what i'm going to do is just finish off here and as you can see I have been doing this with my fingers and it's a lot I found it a lot easier to do it this way I did try a couple of ways of doing it with sticks a couple of sticks the ruler a shuttle from um, a kit I have and in the end I thought no this really is the best way now because I'm at a, an angle here I'm going to leave that that just hanging and deal with that at the end I'm going to just trim that so, oh sorry that was in the way wasn't it that is done now back to our photograph this is just ideal for weaving because as you can see it's already in rows so you don't have to look that far for um, your inspiration it's just there in front of you you're just going to follow the colors the colors are very repetitive so it needs something if I took that away you could see how mundane that could be okay so without that there isn't actually a focal point you could say that is the focal point which is quite true because it's a deeper color but the color of this is still up here so if you have a look there you can see it needs something 
and that's the something just a little touch of another color so I want to keep the yellow or in uh, introduce another color doesn't have to be yellow don't forget this is only your inspiration I happen to love these colors anyway so for me this is just a demonstration of how to get this into your weaving now I'm not doing the whole lot once again I'm going to frame the piece that I want now this is an actual photograph frame as you can see a little six by four I think it is and I'm going to choose a piece from this because this is the same sort of proportions of or as the work the loom portrait narrow long it's the same it's a tiny little a loom you might as well say um, yeah I think that might I think if I use that side the gold is going to influence <laughs> this if I use that side yeah not so much of an influence there so I'm going to move this over like we always do with the frames make it just a tiny bit bigger now I don't think I want that mass in there I, I don't want that in there um, I could do go for that no. so I'm going to move it along and I like that I think I'm going to go with that. Hang on, what about no top and bottom? This isn't it. Um, yeah, so um, I don't think I've got much choice really. So I'm going to just stick to this piece here. I think. Let's we'll start piece. thinking about the fringe at the bottom. Luckily, it is already folded to the length I want which is that is actually three inches so that will make my fringe about two and a half inches okay which suits me and then if you watch the last video the weaving one you'll know exactly what to do so you could just skip forward if you want but those of you who are watching this for the first time you might want to see how to do or to start making the fringe now I'm using one two is that the same no that's not the same one one two going to introduce some blue at this stage as well just to make a bit of a composition right at the beginning but don't get too wound up in rules and regulations because this is for fun and I think that um, it is for fun um, it's a gorgeous interest it's very creative and artistic and all the other lovely words that we like but don't lose that don't lose that thrill of, of creating something because you're so worried about doing it right or doing it wrong you can't do it wrong it's your work you can't do it wrong at all on the four rows that I did I meant to show you I have actually um, warped it shall we say a different way some would say wrong I have walked it a different way wrong and I thought well I'm not taking that out I'm really not so I can work with that because it doesn't notice I know it's there and not only that this fringe will be covering up any any defects okay so please don't ever panic um, not even if you're in a class don't panic as I said, you can't go wrong. The main thing is, we oh, enjoy it. Must enjoy it, or otherwise it's not worth doing. So I'm going to cover this up with these threads. Right, so I think I've got enough here now. So all I'm going to do is cut it in half along the edge. Lovely put that onto one side because I should need that again later and here we go and these are all uh, yarns all cut for the fringe they look very much the rug makers out there will recognize this and think oh it's just like um, yarn for making rugs so I'll put that over there just for a second and get back to our loom 
Right. Now, I've made a start on this because I think it's going to be easier to demonstrate with these already in place because you can really see the how it works in pairs here. Okay, so rather than describe it, I've made this a start there. Oh, no, that's not good, is it? <laughs> white on white, that's silly. So you can see how these, is the, the um, knot is worked over four threads, which end up as two pair. Okay, so I have my thread here, and I've taken, just, just take them random, unless you want to do it a nice colour, some sort of colour border, but I've just um, sequenced colour border, I'm just doing mine at random. So, we're going to start here with the four, and we will do this the same at, as we start, this is how we start. Now I'm going to make that a little bit bigger, so now that's bigger, we're going to work over the first four. Have you taken my threads, just as they come? And I'm going to find the center. So the center's about there. Fold it in half. And I'm going to find the center of those four, which is there. Lift that up. So I've got two here in front of me, here to this size, and two there. Now with the two, that is the furthest distance, I'm going to. Just put the half here, on there, and just bring the threads through under that pair. I hope my fingers aren't in the way. So I put the thread under those two there. Just going to hold that out of the way, like that. Put that out of the way now. And then with the other, the, th the three, I'm going to take it across the two loose ones. So take it across there and underneath those and bring it out in the middle. It's a lot easier when you're working with just one thread. So now you should have all the ends in the middle. Oh, oh I can see I've lost an end there. there. So now you have all the ends in the middle. Can you see that? There they are. We just pull it and bring it down okay I think I lost a strand there so that's that one I'll do another one take four at random so what have we done two we've got four there over there so I'm going to halve it again in half look for your four your four strands one pair there right we want to go for that one there at the distance, okay, I'll move it up so perhaps you can see it better there. So hold it in the middle, bring those round, out of the way, and then with that end you're going to go over to the two that you missed earlier, then you're going to go underneath those, okay. Now you might find an easier way of doing this. To me, this work. This way works for me. Now you can see, look, they're both coming out of the middle between two pair. And pull it down. And there we are. And if you have you got if you have your fork handy, you could just beat that down with your fork. Alright, I'll do one. So that was the wire knot across two pairs of threads and you can see now you've got some really nice gaps between the weft the warp threads sorry the warp threads going up now I'm going to change course now I'm picked out the blue the blue threads and I've added a different blue here um, and I'm going to do now a raya knot along here but using just two strands and this is this is the regular way of doing Ryanot but I like to do it across two so 
I'm going to show you now how to do it across one and I apologize for this camera angle this is the closest I closest I can get but I want you to see how I start off here down here with this second row of two strands and not four so I'm still going to use four four pieces of thread still going to do exactly the same method but over two so I'm going to start <clears throat> with three all the rest will be over two but here if I don't alternate alternate them at this stage there will be a gap going all the way up here and we don't really want that so our four strands do it exactly as before but we're working on two so find the middle just going to find the middle there and with the other end we're just going to bring it over and through the middle here and these four strands just want to run off in different directions culture and then we'll just bring it down that one's oh I've pulled that and I've pulled that so there's a long bit and a short bit so I'm just going to correct that just pull it that's it and then bring it down so that that middle that gap there now has been closed up now I'm going to carry on like this as before and do it right the way to the end for some reason these are all different lengths so once again going to go over to there in well so that's finished and that didn't take very long at all it's probably about 10 to 15 minutes so not bad at all as you can see here I haven't trimmed it yet I'll be doing the trimming right at the end but you can just see the pink poking out from underneath now if I layer the blue later on you'll see um, more of the pink but I'm not so sure at the moment what effect that I hope to get just to secure all these nice and give us a good starting point for our weaving is to do two or three as many as you like plain um, plain weaves plain lines of weaving or lines of plain weaving <laughs> I should say. So I'm going to start here. Now I went back to the picture for reference, and unfortunately, you're not getting a true picture of these colours down here. This part here is almost grey. It's a beautiful pinky grey. So I'm going to be guided by the the colours, but I'm not going to follow them slavishly. But um, I just love the way that they look. So went to my stash uh, I have no wool like it and I found this little piece of fabric and this has all the colours in it that this lower half has it has grey, black, pink a beautiful purple I hope that comes up because that really is a gorgeous purple which is in the bottom part of our photograph so all I'm going to do and I expect this will fray it looks really frayable I'm going to just um, tear this into some strips and I think I'm going for about one inch I can see that I keep that there I can see the grid on the table and I think the one inch looks Oh, no, it isn't fraying too much. Well, I start with that one. And just as we did before, the f like the four rows in between here, that is a plain or tabby weave. And that's all we're going to do, the basic plain or tabby weave. Now, I'm going back to the ruler, and I'm going to see if... 
I can use this as a shutter stick. If not, it doesn't make any difference really. Um, I'll just use my fingers. But seeing as it's in front of me, I thought, I know, I'll have a go with this. Now, the lolly stick idea that we used in the last one, the, the uh, cardboard loom hanging, that lolly stick won't be wide enough or strong enough to take fabric right I'm very loosely going to knock that but so it comes undone now I expect oh yeah it's, it is the, the width I, I was going to say I expect I might have to join this at some point now as before we're going to start under Oh, sorry, for some reason I always like to go under first. Right, so I'm changing that. Under, over, under, over, under, over. <laughs> I'm really going to concentrate on this after getting it wrong in the, um, the purple weave earlier on. So far, so good. The problem is, these lines, these walks... I'm running at the side of the grid on the green cutting mats underneath. Um, they're not doing me any favours. But hey ho, I'm going to carry on. So far, this ruler is working out well. So I'm going to carry on. So hopefully, after I've undone this, you'll be able to have a, a look and see how that worked out. Now, this ruler did make a difference. That was really good but because of the table and the way this is set up I mean the screen is right here oh where are we it's right here in front of me this this side of the loom is actually on the computer stand so I'm a bit cramped for space here so I'm going to have to stand and do this on the way back do the next one let's have a look will that go I think I, because these I might start a new piece I think I'll do this in definite strips now I'm going to hopefully I've done that right this time and I'm just going to beat it down now with the fork now it's up to you if you untwist your weft so the pattern is the right side where the brighter colours are normally although we have found in some of our work that actually no the bright colours are on the back but it's up to you whether you twist it or not I'm just leaving this as it um, as it comes so be all that down to where it meets the fringe right and I'm just going to straighten that up a little bit lovely right if you can hear some machinery going on out there the leisure center opposite is being knocked down they've actually built the new one beside it and that's that's operational now and they left the old one and they're um built on um they're knocking it down which is very sad because um my dad used to take me there when it was opened oh 69 ish i think got lovely fond memories there right so i'm going to do exactly the same here just thread this up and I think I might at the moment oh <laughs> that was screechy sorry I think at the moment it, I think I'm looking to do about four rows so I'm going to carry on you won't miss anything because I'm going to do exactly the same here as I did on the previous row and as soon as I've managed to do the amount of rows that I think this needs I'll get back so the four rows have been done now and there is a mistake that I can see and not only that the knot in the warp um, has surfaced onto this side but it doesn't matter because 
that's all texture and if I don't like it later I can always do something about that so those have been done and I think that's looking really sea like and very very wavy as well now the next weave that we're going to do is sumac weave and we did this we did this as well and this is really beautiful it's the weave that looks like a chain stitch so nice strip of fabric from the rag bag same colors as a photograph nice and fine it's very very silky this so we're going to do the sumac stitch and it's over four down through the warp so over four and down don't worry about the thread that's hanging then up through two between two there we go and then we're doing that again over four one two three four over four turn back up between two over four I'm going to make that big so you can see see it blown up right that's just out of shot a little bit let me see if I can just turn that right so over four one two three four and through the warp <clears throat> There we go so that's over the four and then up between the four so we've got two warps either side of the needle now there we go over four one two three four down then back between the four so once again we've got two threads either side of the needle and you can see this taking shape already half a chain stitch so over four one two three four and down so I'm on my way back now I've done almost completed the two rows I'm just I've just got a couple more to do one two three four and I'm doing it now without the needle it's I think for me it's a lot easier without the needle it really depends sometimes I like using the lolly sticks sometimes I like using the needle um, it's just how you feel at the moment and what's easiest for the task so and can you see the lovely chain one two three four over and back and that is that completed so I'm going to beat it down with the fork it goes right the way along there and this is far too wide to get into the camera <laughs> under the camera right unless I push it up a little bit now the sumac rows are always separated by two rows of um, plain weave also tabby weave so I'm going to do two rows here to separate <coughs> the sumac from what's to come now once again I'm going for strips just strips of um, stash well rag bag this is definitely rag bag stuff now and I'm just going to push these ends out of the way because they will be neatened up later as soon as I move the frame actually the loom I'll probably start tidying those up but meanwhile I'm going to do and um, I think I'll try, shall I try doing this? No, I'm going to do it with my fingers. I should attach this 
to the ruler. I might make it. So what I'm going to do is actually make a shed, a shed stick from this. See how we get on with that. So the first I'm going over, no I'm going under, over, under, over very, very carefully. Trying not to miss any, yep. The problem is there's two thicknesses of string here and the, the finer one is hiding behind the thicker one and making it difficult to see. Right, under over. So I'm going to bring that down a bit. I'm going to use that now to just turn up and make a shed like that. Right, if I can bring that down. I'm going to make it just a bit smaller now and you might get the idea of what I've just done. So all I've done now, I've taken the ruler, which I'm calling shed stick, under, over, under, over, to as far as you can see it, or not maybe, and I'm just turning that up on its side, and I'm going to pop these in all the way along, which does actually make it easier, but as I said, because I'm on my side here, um, it, it just makes things a little bit more difficult for some tasks, not for all, but really for this, I need access to both both sides of the loom. But it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. I'm sure I've done this in um, worse conditions. Wherever there are people. Right, there we go. That is the first little bit of tabby weave. Now I could take those back right the way down and squash them. So if I finished on an over, I'll start on an under. And I'm going to do that all the way along until I get to the end. Okay. I have a feeling that you're going to look at this and think, oh, that looks so much different from the last time we saw it. If you look closely and I'll, I'll probably make this bigger. Um, after the sumac stitch, this beautiful stitch along, ah, uh, weave, sorry, it's a weave. After the sumac weave, I completed about seven rows from here to there in between the two lots of sumac because this is actually sumac as well. But because it's a very dark fabric, um, it's not coming out on the screen, but it is exactly the same as this. Now, the pink rose of this, this is eyelash wool. I imagine it, it could be called something else elsewhere. And I bought this today. Funnily enough, I bought this today in a charity shop, 50p. And what, <laughs> what caught my eye? I like guinea pigs. Now, look at this. I'm going to make this smaller. I just love guinea pigs. And I've always wanted to show guinea pigs. But, oh, you know how it goes. Never got round to anything like that. And I looked at that in a basket. And I thought, oh, someone's put a pink guinea pig there. I just have to put eyes there. And there you go. There's my pink guinea pig. Now that appeals to my sense of humour and I think that's hilarious, but that's just the child you <laughs> I'm not going to resist it seeing as the buttons are there. Anyway, this is stretchy. It's actually on, oh, I'm still laughing at my own joke, sorry. Um, this is stretchy, it's actually on elastic. Now to do this, I there are two rows there, two rows of just plain tabby weaving okay so just the average weaving but on each row I've used this four times okay I've used it four times now when you pull this through your warp threads it flattens so you get your fork and you just stir things up a little bit like that and you get that lovely lovely eyelash effect 
and that is really nice see unfortunately you can't see that on the screen too well let me make that bigger again and you might be able to pick oh that's better yeah you're seeing it now if I just prop the eyelashes back and don't worry about the gaps here because these are sort of intentional five rows here there we've got wool two lots of wool on the pink and blue one lots of wool here and ribbon this is a narrow ribbon and this is a blue another blue row of wool now what these are finger knitting and finger knitting is just we used to sit as, as little children at primary school so we weren't very old and we would do it around our, our fingers and just like that and then loop one over the other and then over the other now I think well, I've completed this section okay this bit here which to me is the first quarter first quarter so now I'm looking at the half I'm going now from the first quarter up to the half here and here we get we start getting let me hold that up yeah so here we start getting nice shapes we've had straight straight lines here and it's still straight here up here so where we are now but from now on we start getting some really nice curvy shapes you see that one around here really nice so I'm going to introduce a curvy line now how I'm going to do this now bearing in mind we do this as an art because I'm about to call this artistic freedom okay also known as artistic license this has the colors in it with this in this okay we even have a touch of green going on here around this beautiful shape we're beginning to see this as shapes okay so we've, we've got the texture well underway now textures there you can see the texture and you can feel the texture textures definitely there we've got the hang of that now the color is there colors are there bit exaggerated maybe some's been eliminated which is okay that's one of our art elements so that's fine now we're going to start looking at the shape so we have some beautiful shapes here which I might actually outline in pen pick out some of these shapes okay until we get back basically to the, sh the straight lines again but anyway for the time being if you can see this color here look can you see how it just perhaps you can't I hope I hope the colors coming out better on the big screen than it is in front of me but uh, look we got this, the lovely colors there so once again all I'm going to do oh and before I do that this blue here is also fabric okay you see I've, I've stripped that as well put that into strips and then put it into balls and it was very easy to use nice another nice satinized fabric there so let's back to this going to put this into strips uh, and I've just been so fortunate that I, I actually just happen to have bits and pieces of what I need for this work if Jackie Galloway's about Jackie it's one o'clock here in the morning are you about <laughs> If I thought you were about, I'd give you a call. Seeing as we're both members of the Wide Awake gang, the insomniacs have all sewn up. So I expect I'll be sitting here for another three hours. Well, I hope not. I've got quite a busy day. See my granddaughter tomorrow and I cannot wait. So um, I don't want her to see Nanny all tired and not able to play. Jackie, if you're up and it's three o'clock again, get to bed. Turn this off and go to bed, okay? 
do as I say and not as I do. <laughs> there you go. Right, so back to this. I'm now going to curve this, give this some shape around here. And I've chosen to do that with the Sumac, the Sumac Weave. So, just, um, oh, just this has just crossed my mind. I, I might actually, I wonder if I should just follow. No, I'm going to do it just freehand, freestyle. Now, bearing in mind, I am at the side again. So, I'm going to stop, I'm going to be guided by this just for a minute all right it starts about there yeah yeah it doesn't matter just inspiration so i'm going to start here okay over foot over four and under two okay now i'm going to tuck this end out the way in here for the for the time being and here we go off we go over four and under two one two three four lift in between over two right shall i make that bigger Oops. see jackie i could phone you now couldn't i say so, jackie <laughs> right i need to just move that a little bit so you can see right i'm going to, I'm going to start the curb very gently over four one two three four and under two so i'm going to take it up here now at this point our rules are now forgotten you're you're competent at doing these these weaves you know how to do them correctly you know how to do the knot correctly you know how to do the sumac stitch correctly and the tabby weave and now it's time because you know the rules, we can break them. And that is what we're going to start doing, okay? We've sorted out the texture and the colour. And I'm talking, and I think I've done that one wrong. Yes. Over two, and <laughs> over four, and under two. Right, that's fine. Back, back we go. Um, yeah, so now it's time to sort out a few shapes. Here's the end result. I've put the second row in as well. Um, I just want to give it a little bit more of a curve, I think. I can see it better on the screen. Yeah, I think I'd, I'd like to give it, oh yeah, maybe not so much there. I have to be careful here. If you can see underneath here, that's where there's a join. I've had to join the fabric there, which is no problem, but just in case you, you're wondering what that is, it is actually where I've joined the fabric, but that'll be tidied up. Hmm. Do I want that? It actually looks like a wave, doesn't it? I quite like that. Do I want it more curvy? Um, before we go any further, I mean, you can see how far I've got at the moment. Uh, Lynn... Lynn Richard Hubby's phone. <laughs> Hello, Lynn. Lynn contacted me this morning and she's asked about shuttles. Now, don't get hung up on shuttles or anything technical. You can use that's the shuttle. That's from a child's weaving kit that I got on eBay for about four pounds, I think. So that's a nice shuttle from eBay child's child's kit let me remind you now in the last hanging video Lynn if you have a look at that or you might for, might have forgotten because I, I know that you you saw it you can use these lolly sticks and as you can see you know I've got a collection of them here and these are just wonderful for using so now you can see what I've done here I decided on a wave and there we are and I followed it as we do each time we do a sumac weave here and here we stabilize it secure it with a couple of rows of tabby or plain weaving just your ordinary under and over under and over I followed it here all the way there and I've also followed it here here I have done two rows um, I'll make this a bit bigger so you can you can see what I'm talking about. 
So I have two rows here and each row is made up of four strands of wool. And the same here but I've done three rows here. Now this one here is the finger knitting or the chain that's made on the crochet hook. And I used three threads of this. Um, you can't see it's off screen. Um, three threads, three strands, if you like, of of wool in these colours, the colours that are down here. And I I actually did that on a number four double M crochet hook. Not that that makes any difference, but just in case you wanted to know, that's that's how I did it. Now I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. And move the camera because the next bit I think is very exciting. Now we're on to shapes. Now I'm going to refer back to this. Now I have this lovely curvy wavy shape here which is along here. You might just be able to pick it out here. That lovely shape there I've put here. Now here, all this is just broken down into shapes. So I've got lovely big shapes along here and I'm going to now just not replicate them but be inspired by them. So I'm going back here, to, I'm going to work on this part here now and all I'm going to do with my fork is make some of those lovely shapes and I'm going to do that just by raising some of these until I get the shape that I I want. Now I'm not going to touch the sumac weave but these just the plain weaves can take this. Um, see that's a nice shape there. I might move that down and push that up. I want some really nice wavy sea sizey shapes. How's that looking on the screen? Mm. Might want to break that down into smaller shapes because if I leave it like that I might just as well just keep following that to get to that shape. That's all I'd be doing there. So I'm going to close these up. They are already I've broken that shape into smaller shapes. Um, I close that up and I have a lovely shape running along there but and now we're thinking shape and contrast we have now we want long against short, wide against narrow We've got plain here, but these plain ones aren't finished yet because I'll be doing the same there. Okay, but that comes later. That that comes much later. But I want these now like this. Now I might change my mind as I go along. Uh, I might bring that down make a few more shapes but for the time I can do that off screen but for the time being yeah I'm not keen on that there I, I'm not liking this because now I'm getting too much of a regular pattern that I don't want so I might close that up and bring that down follow that oh that's yeah I think uh, I want to curve that a little bit but I don't want that sort of bow look. Oh, that gives the idea of a wave, doesn't it? Quite a rough wave. If I close that there, there, and bring that up there. I think I'm bringing that up a bit further. Tight. So I'm going back to a darning needle. I'm going to start at the end here. And I'm going to just knot that round. And I'm using two strands of double knit. I must find out what that is. 
um, in America. It's the thick wool that you use. It's not chunky for Aaron. It's just what you would use for ordinary knitting a pullover or a cardigan. And the tabby weave. Okay, so all the way along there. Oh, that's making another nice shape there. <gasps> Let's not get carried away at the moment. It's hard not to, so along here, all the way along. So I'm going to... Blue's in place now, and I quite like this, this look here. I know I had to be really, really careful not to overdo the blue so I could use up the thread. Um, it's just so tempting to just keep going on and on, but I think it makes some really nice well-defined shapes here and along here now and it brings up the blue as well from the bottom down here I'm going to put some beads on here once again all charity shop things these oh you can't see them really can you these beads I'm going to pop those on not sure whether to do them here or there. Let's see how many have I got? Two, four, six. Oh, I think I might have enough to go along there. I'm going to use a regular sewing needle. A sewing needle that will go through there, that hole, once with the thread going that way, and then twice with the thread coming back. So when you choose your needle and your bead, and your thread, remember that thread has to go through double. So if you're using it just one thread, it's going to go through twice. So I've got two here, so I'm going to be using four strands of thread, if you like. Okay, now what I am going to do, I'm using just an ordinary sewing machine thread, but I'm running it through some wax. I've already done this a couple of times, but I'll just show you how I've done it. That is really nicely waxed, and the wax is to strengthen it, make it stronger um, for when. So all you do is this, just hold the end. You don't want to run it through your thumb when you do this, otherwise you'll be running the wax off. Okay, so there you go. I put the beads in. I've got a line there and a line there. These are quite hard to see. They are, they're really lovely. They're glassy and they're shiny, but on the screen you can't see them too well. These are lovely as well. Now both are following the contour of the line above them and they're both, both lots have been locked underneath with rows of plain weaving okay so you can see i've popped a white row in that well two white rows there and the same there you might just be able to see that um just to keep the beads just to lock those in place now what i'm going to do is spend some time just looking at these shapes here i'm working out how to do these little shape there as well um, i'm just going to work out how to work those I'll see if I can pop this back into the centre and you can have a good look at those shapes that I'm talking about. Right, there we are. So, I've got quite a few shapes here. Now, this shape to me is looking really big. Now, I don't know whether to leave it like that or just make more shapes from that. But if I start doing that, I'm going to end up with a lot of small shapes here, which is in keeping with the shapes in the picture with all these small shapes going on here so it is in keeping with this part here and all the shapes but I'm wondering if I actually want them on the um, this part here I'm going to have to think as well about the colours might bring some colour from the bottom those greys that we used earlier on I might bring those up I expect it's looking very different now to the last time you saw it. I can't remember what I've done. I mean, I've just finished it, but I can't remember what I've done now. Um, I've spent so long on it, my head's buzzing about. So I'm going to just go through this very quickly and then pop it away before my son comes over in about 15 minutes. 
So, very, very briefly, just want to explain that what you do see here, the changes, were done with the two sticks. The little lolly stick and the big one, um, popping things through and pushing things along, and my fingers. So, no special equipment whatsoever. Lolly sticks and fingers. And once you get into the rhythm, it's quite easy. I parted the lines, pushed them up, and made space to put this fibre in. And this is the fibre that you use for felting. When you're felting the little polystyrene animals or items and you're, you're felting in with a needle, this is the acrylic fibre that you use. So I've done that along here and along here with the felt. Here I opened it up a little bit more and I've put a strip of multicoloured fabric there. Now I think I, I need to make this a little bit smaller otherwise you're not going to see what I'm talking about too well. Right so if you can see this here I put a little bit there. Now this piece here it has all these colours in it. All those colours, mostly dark colours and I thought that just lifts it a little bit. I used that as well here. Here and here. Oh, uh, what else? Now you can see that I've also parted threads along here and put in the felting fabric again. I've kept to the purple because I want I want it to have the purple look. It was verging too much into the blue, and I don't really want the blue there at the moment. But what I did do, and I'm not sure if you can see that on the camera. All I did was pick out some shapes here, which are quite characteristic of the picture. I haven't copied them, but I've been inspired to break these up. And that is where I got the idea from these. You see the shapes here, to put those shapes in there. So I think, oh, and I've also put some rhinops there. Now this needs to be trimmed but I'm not going to trim that yet. Now I've ended up with a lovely shape here. You see the shape here? There. Which is like the shape here. So I'm calling that purple virgin on the blue, only virgin touching on the blue. I'm calling that section finished. So now I'm going to work on this section here which is predominantly white. I can see on the screen what I can't see in front of me that this piece here is actually sort of a brown sandy colour. No, I can't see that here. So it's, it is a brown sandy colour and this bit is the beautiful surf coming in, the waves coming in and all foamy and that, lovely and glistening. So this is now the piece I'm going to work Again. on. I've started the pinkish white here. So this has gone down from here, you see this row here, sandy coloured row, which is actually pink, from there right up to here where I've put um, some whites here. So at the beginning I've started to mix up the pink with the whites but I'd like now to take it from here into a deeper area of white as here, round here, just to make this side a bit more white, maybe so it runs across here into this sandy colour, which is actually a row of sequins. If I make this bigger now, um, you might get a better idea of what it's actually looking like. Right, there we are. So this is the area that I've, I've done before uh, filming. So this is the new area from here to the end here. And I think you can see the sequins a bit better like that. So what I'm going to do now is what I did here um, further down where I opened up 
some of the threads, some of the wefts and just put in other small areas. I think I remember. I'm going to do that area about here. Let me just move that camera a, just a smidgen so you can see. Right. So I'm going to move that there. Um, yeah, bring that there. I still want the waviness, the wavy shapes of the waves. So I'll bring that around there and then I might open this up as well. Get some really nice shapes going on there. Um, and that one as well. Um, yeah, 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 I like that. So at the moment I have all these shapes here. One, two, three and one there. But I've just, as I've turned down, I can see here there's some loosely woven warps there. Uh, sorry, wefts there. Now, can you see why that you need a really strong warp thread? I couldn't do this if the warp thread was weak because it would be snapping. I can see on the screen this is very thick, so I'm going to push that roving down. I don't like that too much, too wide, because it looks as if it's taking over. That's oh yeah, look at that. Look, just look at that. So we're going to have areas of wide. Now bear in mind the art, the art design elements. We've got wide and the contrast down to narrow. I think I might leave it narrow. That's very big. So what's happened since the last time uh, you looked at this? I've put quite a few rows in from, I think it was here that I stopped. I can't quite remember. It was a couple of days ago now. Um, but I'll just run through what I have done. Now, there's no special, no special secret to this. It is just the over and under weave and separating the fibres, separating the warps and filling in the gaps after you've separated it. Now I'm sure you can see this bit here, the white thread running down there and it's also running here. These were side by side but to get this lovely shape here all I did was push them apart with my fork, push them apart like that. Oh look, I've got some more shapes there. And then I put this this in. I'm just going to close that up, but it looks as if... No, I'll leave that open actually, because I'm going to fill that in now. So, with oh, my well. stick, I'm just going to put that through there, which I've done there. I'm going to poke this end down. Now, don't worry about alternating up and down, um, under and over, trying to match them because at this point you'll find that a little bit difficult. You'll probably match one but not the other. Don't worry, this is what we do as textile artists, okay? Now I'm just going to move this slightly to get that in the centre. Right, so with the lolly stick, just going to push it down and up making sure not to pull it through here before anyway how we just fill that gap in pull that down pull that down oh look i keep making oh i'm making lots more i'll leave might leave one of these and put some beads in there so that is no problem at all and what i will do Poke that through to the back when I finish. Um, I might be able to pull it. Yeah, pull it through there. Now these end bits. Now the back will need to be securely finished after. All these ends that I'm pushing through will be securely finished after the weaving's done. After it's complete. So the blue so, strip there has been put in and this is it here um, I don't think there's anything here that we haven't done before 
I've put some uh, Ryan knots along here in blue. Um, what else have I done? I've got the sumac stitch here. Oh, sorry, the sumac weave here. I've got two rows of sumac weave. One there and one here. I have a little area here of sequins. I've also put a feather here. Um, a nice blue feather that I took off a pair of earrings actually. So the next bit is this bit here which is white with just a hint of pink. So this is white. Once again it's the waves rolling in with the white fluffy foam here. So that is my next bit and then we're looking to finish it because there isn't much left to do now. So I'm going to carry on with this. I do the white. I'm not going to do any of this on the camera because you've already seen it all done before further back. So I don't want to waste your time by showing you what you've already seen. Yeah. Okay. Here so. I've sorted the white here and this is lace. Um, can I get that into the frame? So the first row here is just a row of lace and close up it looks really nice because you can actually see when I hold it up you can see the light coming through some little holes there. So I beat that down and then there are two rows of the white wool that we've used before. I'm, I'm looking to see if, if it's, no it's not on the camera and it's the white wool with the, the silver thread running through it. So here we have a nice gold fabric so this strip of fabric, it's been woven in twice, once one way and once the other. And then I finished up the sequins, there's no more of that left now, it's all gone and I've used it there. Now you know how I've got the shapes here, by opening up the, way, the weft threads. Okay, so this is how I'm getting some of these lovely shapes like this one here. And it's just by opening up the weft threads. This sumac, that's a row of sumac in lace. It's the same lace that I've used here in strips. So that is sumac. And then here I have, what have I got here? I've got some silver and white thread from the doy of the serviette that I use further down here, or the placemat. And some scrim here. And that scrim close up looks really nice because it is actually fraying well not at the moment but while I was doing this it was actually fraying and it looks really good it looks a bit like um, eyelash thread so here as well we have some roving just in plain tabby weave along there um, have we anything else no here this foam the sea foam small strips of lace one inch lace just cut into possibly three inches what's that two four six seven seven and a half centimeters by two and a half uh, by two centimeters or three inches by one along there and that is the knots the rear knots or the rear knots all the weaving's finished now. I haven't put in the yellow um, horizon or the sun as I thought I was going to do because I think it would have just been one thing too much. I have put some uh, rye knots here made from blue lace. Then I have um, some weaving in between, all with fabric. All that fabric strips and some blue weave uh, roving here. This is wool, so the sumac here is wool and the rest of what you can see here is strips of fabric, even this here, the rye knots here are strips of fabric. I've so tied in all the ends here and this side as well. It's very very difficult now to get it onto this screen. I'll try to run the camera down very slowly so that you can get a rough idea of 
what it's looking like but the camera only goes so far right so there we are no scruffy no scruffy edges anywhere the only thing left to do now I'm going to move the camera down manually there we go the only thing to do now is to trim this edge and then to mount it on a hanger now what I've done I'll, I'll start trimming this now so you can see me at least start it but I'm going to put this hang this on the wall so that you can actually see what it looks like um, in its entirety if you like because this is in, impossible for you to see on the table it's far too long I'll be doing it with my camera so I do hope the quality will be fine but I also wanted to show you the back before I start trimming this the fringe I'm just going to flip that over and it's quite heavy Ooh. and this is what the back looks like um, I'm just going to run the camera up I'm doing that manually so I hope I'm not doing it too quickly there are some large knots um, that is just, uh, can you see that on the screen now I'm pointing at some roving there this is just how roving looks at the back okay because it's thick and once you turn it back to neaten it um, it gets a bit thick there I have some knots here, small knots here, another one there, um, let me have a look, there are some larger knots up here, I don't know if you can see this knot here, that's quite a large knot where I actually tied two pieces of fabric together um, mid, mid pick, mid, mid line, so it's okay it's okay I mean it's not beautifully neat there or here where I did the same but I think there's a tiny knot there but I think all in all it's going to be a hanging um, it isn't going to be the back wouldn't be seen anyway I mean I'm quite happy it's either been over sewn some of the long bits have been over sewn with tiny stitches I can't actually see any and other pieces have been woven from the back to secure them so they don't undo and that is that so that is the finished piece well I say that I think looking at this now I'm just going to trim the fringe but not much but I would like some red uh, pointing through well, you can see the feather there um, and there we are finished so the next thing to do is trim the bottom as I've just said there give that a haircut so I've given it a haircut I'm not quite sure whether it looks okay but I won't really know that until it's hanging on the wall and then I'll see whether it needs another trim so I'm going to push that up and one by one I'm going to break these I think I'll remove the card oh the card is really stuck in there <sighs> goodness oh, oh crikey you need muscles to do this the heaving looms about and card and nails and goodness knows what else but anyway I'm now going to remove this one by one now if you did the other or watch the other videos you'll know exactly what I'm going to do now I'm just going to break these stitches oh sorry these um warps and tie them and I'm going to do that as I go along I'll make this bigger so you can see what I'm doing start here and I'm just going to knot them just knot them like so nice tight knot now I'm going to do this to each pair as I work down and I'll do exactly the same to the other end 
so that's been done now and all I did after knotting them was trim them that part is done and now we're up to the other end so it's so nice to be able to manage manage this now now I did the same to this end um, as you saw there I trimmed it knotted, uh, knotted it and trimmed it now I very very loosely at this point I have glued this stick just in a couple of places more or less to tack it in place while I sew it now this isn't the original stick actually um, the original stick I found yesterday I took my son's dog out for a two hour walk and during the course of that I found the ideal stick for this and um, my grand doggy and I sat down on a bench and he sat underneath and I thought oh bless him he's he's so um he's so quiet he's really good under there gnawing on his bone and when I looked, he was gnawing on my stick that took almost two hours to find. I can't believe it. Couldn't use it. So this this stick isn't as good <laughs> as sticks go. This isn't as nice as that stick. But um, at least Floyd, the dog, enjoyed it. Now, as, as you can see, I'm just over sewing right the way across the stick from one side of the weaving to the other side and this is exactly as I did before on the other weaving pieces so I'm going to carry on with this to the end and then I think we might be able to call it finished there's the stick in place nicely over sewn quite firm and secure and now I'm just going to have to add the hanger could have done this at the same time but I ran out of string so I'm just going to stick it through there loop it and bring it over this way possibly um, that length goodness um, and I'm just going to do the same here just take it through the end here and that is that the back needs a little bit of a trim just to tidy up some of these loose these loose ends and that is that so it's finished hallelujah oh I feel like singing this seemed to go on forever and ever right I'm going to put it on the wall hang it on the wall and, and put a picture up so you can actually see it in situ so to speak okay so I'll just run this down very very slowly and can you see how nice and straight the edges are here and roll it up as I go Oops. And hope you enjoyed that I hope all the new people enjoyed it as well I think I've finished my weaving project so um, I shall be looking to do something else now I've actually had a couple of challenges come in so I think I might start with a nice little challenge okay so take care everybody and um, do keep put, putting your work on Facebook Okay, I haven't had time for Facebook recently because of these, these projects that I've been involved in. There doesn't seem to be um, a great deal of time not without the family as well. So anyway, do take care and I look forward to hearing from you on Facebook or in the comments below. Okay, speak to you soon. Take care now.